What's the crack lads? We are back and I hope you guys are good. We are going to be doing our second ultimate training guide for the Manchester United Epics. And yeah, we're going to be taking a look at Schmeichel. If you've already packed this player from, you know, it is a re-release. Um, if you are a newcomer, obviously you might be wondering how to train him up. So I hope this video helps you. It's kind of an easy one to do uh, because there's not much, you know, you can go really wrong with Schmeichel here. Uh, you just kind of stay the same route as you do when you're training any goalkeeper. Now, I have a very strong opinion about what to train up on a goalkeeper. I've tested over hundreds of hours on goalkeepers and what actually works for them. And there seems to be kind of like a couple of cutoffs and a couple of kind of things animation wise, especially when you have a goalkeeper that is extremely tall, such as uh, Schmeichel here, he's 193. Um, the smaller keepers need to have better jump and better reach, okay? Um, but for the taller keepers like this, you don't need to have that jump as much and you also don't need to have the catching as much because they seem to be able to parry a lot of shots out. And look, if you want to concede goals or corners, I mean, I think you know the answer to that one. I don't really care too much about my goalkeeper catching. I just want... Um, I, I want to be able to like actually parry the ball out or clear the ball as best as I possibly can. Now, the big thing I like about Schmeichel compared to some other goalkeepers that are in the same vein as him, including Arsenal's David Seaman, who we will get a look at in a, in a few minutes as well, or whenever you do end up watching this video, um, you can watch it whenever you want. The big problem with Seaman, as you'll see, is that he does not have good player skills. Like his low punt is missing, his long throw is missing, and it is a bit of a concern when you do when you are looking for a goalkeeper, you want to have the goalkeeper as the most complete option in your team. I would say that having a good goalkeeper is probably only second in importance, in my opinion, to a box-to-box -box midfielder, especially for the way I like to play because I'm very uh, combative. I like to get in around you know players and frustrate players by just getting a lot of blocks in. And it's the same with my keeper. I do a lot of manual goalkeeping. So I do like that awareness of the keeper to be able to set his positioning up. And then I also like having a big frame in goals, you know. Um, I know certain goalkeepers like Kaylor Navis or somebody like that are extremely good reflexes. Uh, Rui Patricio is another one that's an extremely good reflex save. Um, but I definitely think, you know, which Michael or who we'll see as an alternative here, I think they are the better option, right? The other thing that you have to think about is whether it's going to be a defensive or an offensive goalkeeper, right? If we just take a quick look at Schmeichel over here on eFootballDB, you will see that his playing style is defensive and you will see that Donnarumma, who's his alternative, if you are staying free to play and looking for a top-class goalkeeper, is offensive, okay? So what I would like to kind of see... Um, if you are thinking of like getting Schmeichel or getting the spinning in for him, or if you're watching this video, you already have got him. This is the best way I think you can train him up, right? Because you've got the player skills and because we've got the unwavering form, chances are we're going to have him in the squad as much as we possibly can, right? Um, that's probably the biggest thing, you know, because he's on B form, okay? He's also got 24 levels to go, which isn't a massive amount, but it is still really good. And I genuinely think on paper, Schmeichel probably has the best stats per any of the goalies that they've released recently, right? Look at the way we've trained him up here, and I'll walk you through it, right? So this is probably the only way I would train it. I'll give you a couple of little hints at the end as well. We've got 88 offensive aware or goalkeeper awareness. We've got 85 catching, 87 clearing, uh, 92 reflexes, and 94 reach. Now, I did mention about the reach before. That is tied to the reflex, or that is tied to the goalkeeper's second stat, which is tied to clearing or parrying, Okay. If you want to, I would make these two changes. I think that the goalkeeper clearing, the only reason that I have this at 87 there is because when we get the form arrow boost, we are going to get goalkeeper awareness at 88 plus two. So we're going to get that into the 90 zone. We're going to get this into the close enough to the 90 zone. And we're also going to have reflexes reach into the 95 plus zone around that, right? Which is going to be huge for this card. Reach isn't as much important as parrying or clearing is, okay? Now, the other thing is we've popped four into aerial strength here, which is an out, out, um, out the field training progression, right? But it actually is tied to your physical contact and jump, okay? So we give that up. We give four into that, which is going to be huge. And then that is going to be uh, bringing it up from 74 to 78. Once we get the boost on that as well, we're also going to have jump into the 80s. So what this means is you are effectively going to have five of these stats here. You're going to have four of the five of these stats into the 90 zone. And you're also going to have jump into the 80 zone. So I think that's an extremely good card. Now, as I said, if you are looking to make a couple of additional changes to this uh, to this pack, 
I would leave everything as is there. I would leave that at 88. But what I would probably do is I would get rid of this jump. You don't really need it if you if you are um, doing a lot of manual goalkeeping yourself for corners and stuff and for long balls and, you know, switching to that. If you are doing that, then that's fine. Um, I would leave that at 88, which is the knockoff at uh, 8 before it starts taking 3 points. So this takes 2 points for every uh, progression that you have. And then I would probably take down as well, um, I would probably take down the reach a little bit. And I would actually probably pop up the goalkeeping catching um, to go to the 88 mark as well. So that means that your reflexes are going to be skyrocketed nearly at 99 your reach is still going to be at around 94, 95. You're going to have awareness and catching all in the 90s and your jump is just going to be below 80. So I think that that's probably a brilliant card as well, but it depends how you want to train him. You could leave that at 87 if you want it as well and pop one more into the clearing to pretty much have all his stats in the 90 zone. So I definitely think that's the route to go with him. Now, Donnarumma is one of my favorite players in the game. He's been in my game in my squad for, I think the first, first signing that I bought was him and then Van Dijk um in my normal gp players you can see a very similar uh card there obviously the italian pack card was miles better with 21 levels compared to this guy with 26 levels the italian pack if you have him you already have one of the best cards in the game probably the best goalkeeper in the game um but i do actually really like this standard card for 390,000 gp it's a no-brainer it goes to 95 overall 80 plus jump uh with the form arrow and then you've got awareness catching clearing and reach all up around the 85 plus mark 86 87 and then the reflexes are over 90 so that is a good alternative if you're looking to stay free to play and roll to glory with no spend on coins so that is it for me lads i'll be back soon with uh dennis Irwin next we'll talk to you then